filmmakers, and when I say filmmaker, I mean uh, producer, director, obviously screenwriters, but <clears throat> um, you know, people who make films. Really, the I, I wouldn't say just a screenwriter. That's kind of a special case ish. We'll talk about, but in general, filmmakers. A filmmaker has to be a storyteller. Okay. Now, it might not be a very good storyteller, but if you're a filmmaker, you're a storyteller. Even if you make documentary films, there's still a, a story to be told about whatever this historical event was or whatever this nonfiction um, issue is that they're doing the, the documentary on. So, filmmakers are storytellers, but they're not writers. They're not writers. Th there, there, there is such a thing as a as somebody who's just a screenwriter who is a writer but also does some screenwriting, and that person would be a writer. But just because someone wrote a script doesn't mean they're a writer either. You know, in a lot of cases in Hollywood, it's you know um, producers who dabble in the scripts or directors who write their own scripts or whatever. You know, and for a long time, Hollywood knew this. They knew that that. They were filmmakers. They weren't writers. And when I say Hollywood, that's kind of a stand-in just for the entertainment industry in general. You know, they knew they weren't writers, so they knew they had to go bring writers in. You know, they really had to get a good, solid writer to to really form up this script and do it well, or or um, consult on it here and there or whatever. You know, for a long time that was a thing. They knew that. You know, even great filmmakers like um, like Alfred Hitchcock, for example. You know, he would seek out good writers, and sometimes he worked with great writers, sometimes he didn't. Uh, he actually worked with uh, Raymond Chandler on the uh, the, two, the Strangers on a Train film, which didn't work out too well. It kind of, kind of butted heads. But, uh, you know, it, it used to be that they really knew they needed a solid script. That was the genesis of a film, was a good script. Nowadays, that's not so much the case anymore. Filmmakers don't think like writers, and it, it wasn't always such a big deal because they would think in terms of just this movie, and, and generally, you know, in general, they could still get the job done in the, in the case of a film. Uh, if you had a sequel, I mean, let's just, you know, usually a sequel in general isn't going to be as good as the last one or whatever, uh, but, you know, you had great exceptions of people you know, like George Lucas, who had a vision you know, of, of a three-part installment, even when he started, <clears throat> or you had films that were based on, you know, large literary pieces like Lord of the Rings or whatever. So that was going to work. Stories were solid there. In this century, though, with the rise of, we'd always had franchises, right? Something like Star Wars, something like Back to the Future. We'd had franchises but with the rise of these shared cinematic universes and, and everything's kind of trying to be this big shared cinematic universe. Now, even what used to just be franchises are always trying to kind of grow and grow and grow with the idea of a shared cinematic universe. Filmmakers can't get away with just being filmmakers. That level of storytelling is just a filmmaker doesn't work anymore. When you're doing a shared cinematic universe, you really have to think like a writer. You have to think like a novelist, like somebody who's writing long form story or whatever. You need to think like that. And and we don't see Hollywood doing that. Hollywood still they're trying to tell these long form stories and they're still thinking like filmmakers and not enough like writers. They they need to bring writers back into the fold, back into the to really shape things up. And I don't mean a director with a vision who happens to write a script. I mean somebody who's a writer it it just floors me how many people think that they can write just because they have good ideas or um be, because they you know how many artists think they can write you know their own comics how many and some can some are great at it but but how many you know just think oh i can handle that i can handle that you know our directors apparently think oh you know i can i can handle that i can handle that no writing's a a real discipline it's a craft fiction writing in particular is a distinct craft and so many people think that well it's just um hey maybe you didn't like that movie but i liked it i liked it who are you to say it's not good i liked it what kind of stupid reasoning is that they wouldn't do that reasoning with anything else 
I, I like pretzels. I really like pretzels. I like the salty. I like the crunch. But pretzels are horrible for you. All that processed flour. And imagine me saying, well, hey, that's just your opinion. You know, screw you if you don't like pretzels. I think they're good. So I think they're great. They're good for me. <laughs> you know, okay, well, enjoy all my health problems and early death because of that, you know. But people think that way about stories all the time. Well, hey, you know, you didn't like it, but I liked it. I thought it was good. I liked it. Taste is a completely separate thing from whether something is intrinsically good. There's no such thing as subjectivity when it comes to the value of art. Art's an objective craft. It's an objective discipline and and there there's there's an objective evaluation to be made of art when it comes to writing in particular because i'm thinking about the underworld movies in particular there there was a time jump between the first well the first two underworld films were were really good it was an underworld movie and a sequel that picked up right afterwards picked up the same themes picked up the same threads of story that were still there to be to be told and, and uh, developed then they jumped back in time and did a prequel which is really great rise of the lichens they developed things that they had said took place you know the original so you could see the integrity of plot and the integrity of story was all there then when they jumped to i think it was 2012 that they made underworld um uh, awakening it's almost like they just got bored with what they were doing and they said let's um you know, we, we, you can imagine the producers thinking this too. Look, you know, we're dealing with a franchise that's like ten years old now. We gotta, we gotta freshen it up a little bit. We gotta, okay. So the, so, a lot of things happen in between evolution and awakening that they don't show on screen. They just kind of sum up real quick so that they can do this like twelve year time jump. So they can tell a completely different type of story with these characters. Gone is the really cool gothic aesthetic. Uh, now it's more of like a, a um contagion apocalyptic kind of movie which isn't isn't necessarily a bad thing but they totally turned their back on the story they were telling and a lot of the the threads and everything like that you you can't do that imagine a writer doing that imagine you know a novelist writing out you know four or five six chapters and they're developing threads and they're developing ideas and then they get done with their sixth chapter and they're like, oh, you know what? We just need to freshen this up a little bit. So it's like uh, time jump. And then the next chapter is 12 years down the road. And they're just, it feels like a totally different book now. They're just doing different kinds of things with this story now or whatever. No, you anybody would look at that and say, that's bad writing. That's bad writing. But movie producers wouldn't say that. Movie producers will say, well, it's been 10 years. We need to freshen it up. We have a new audience now. You know, some ideas are getting stale and we need to, you know, you know, approach it from something new, you know, and that's the business mindset. That's a marketer. That's the producer talking. And a lot of directors think like that, too, because they're they're, you know, producers at heart or they work a lot, you know, with these kind of marketing. They know what's going to you know be popular and whatnot. No, where's the writer's res response to this? Where's the, where's the writer input? That's the important thing. Uh, if we want to really serve story well. When I was just explaining it there, though, I said that, you know, directors will think like this because they know that the game, they know the marketing, they know the industry and they they're thinking about you know, what's going to be popular. So they they'll have no problem, you know, uh, just shelving all of the ideas and themes that were still left to be developed or promised to come forward. They'd have no problem shelving that if it means freshen things up, you know, new, new, new approach, you know, they'd have no problem with that whatsoever because they know what will make a film get the clicks, get the, the, the money, get the ticket sales, get all of that. And this is where the second part comes in, which is the audiences are at fault in this a lot too. It's not just the rise of the shared cinematic universe and writers not really being, or filmmakers not really being equipped to deal with that long form storytelling it's it's audiences who go see this stuff it's audiences who are so as i said before they're so addicted to the content that they will reward these new efforts and so why would a filmmaker think oh you mean i shouldn't do this why it made a lot of money it made a lot of ticket sales or whatever you know everybody who stands up still and tries to defend the dune movies what are you doing? These things are horribly written. But the visuals, all oh, the visuals, and it was a good step 
forward. And if we could just get Hollywood, to, if you want visuals, go to a freaking art museum. They got all the visuals you want. Film is about story. Would somebody please start standing up for story and stop rolling over and showing your belly to any Hollywood executive that happens to give you a movie that's actually not that woke, guys? Oh, <laughs> but it's it's that kind of tribe mentality. All of the right YouTubers said good things about Dune 2. So now everybody thinks, well, I'm a good little anti-woke card carrying member. So I'm going to support that movie and the Joker movie and this movie. And how about story? How about we stand up for story? Dune was horrible. Dune, one of the one of the really good books that actually handles a time jump well. The film version was awful. It, all the changes it made, it's not that well. Are you kidding me? They they, they totally made Chani into a little feminist. They you know, it's just it's awful. It's an awful, awful film. And people are like, well, you know, I kind of enjoyed myself. Screw what you enjoyed. Because that doesn't make it good. That doesn't make it good. You know, eat your pretzels if you must, but stop trying to pretend that they dissolve they belong, you know, in the salad section, you know, or whatever.